Oh, as many people thought it would, we welcome you live inside the hotel right now. This is Mets Hot Stove Live at the Winter Meetings presented by Geico. Alongside Jim Duquette, Andy Martino, I'm Steve Gelbs, and of course, Terry Collins sitting directly to my left as well. He joins us right off the top. Uh, Terry, how excited are you that those national mascots do not have another pitcher in Chris Sale to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to watch play? I'm pretty glad. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty glad he went someplace else, and especially even get him out of, out of our league. Right. Uh, so, you know, this is what's exciting about being here is you never know what's going to happen. So, Terry, this is your seventh winter meetings with the Mets. It's been, a, it's been a long run here. I don't know that people at home know exactly what a manager does here. Are you up in the suite uh, talking trades and meeting with the other teams? Is your job to be down in the lobby working the intel side of it, schmoozing with us? What's, what's, the, what's the winter meetings routine like for a veteran manager like you? Well, it's kind of a do a lot. I mean, we, you know, we have a meeting when we first get here, and we kind of go over some plans. and. You know our, our front office staff's pretty astute. They're they're on top of some stuff now. There's some times Sandy wants me in on some things, or but for the most part, I hang around the lobby, talk to the guys, talk to the other managers, and you know sometimes you get a better feel for you know what they're really looking for, or what they're what they the needs are, and it's kind of fun. It's you know it's a nice three or four days to get ready for spring training. You know, and Terry, part of that is obviously having discussion about your own club within the suite and. You have a surplus of starting pitching. We talked a lot with Sandy yesterday about Zach Wheeler. How do you view his role, starter or reliever next year? Well, Jim, first of all, obviously, due to the fact he hasn't pitched in two years, there's going to be some type of an innings limit. So, but I think you got to, when he comes to spring training, you have to get him ready to start. That's just, I think. Now, after that, once you get him ready and, you know, he, he does enough throwing, he, he collects enough you know, innings in spring training to where his command is back. Now if you say, hey, you know what, I think he can help us in the bullpen to start out with. So you protect your innings at the back end instead of, as we've seen so far in the past, where guys are getting shut down in September because they've already hit the innings limit. I think if you get to do it in the beginning where you have them in, in late in the season, I think it's a better way to go about it. Terry, you have a lot of depth in the infield this year if everybody's healthy. How do you plan on getting everybody the requisite playing time? Well, I, I think, it's, to be honest, I think it's going to be a positive. I really do. You know, you look last year, and, and again, we know we're going to run into some injuries. Every every team does. But, you know, if you've got some some guys you can move in pieces that you can move around, it gives guys days off. And I and we've seen the more rested they are, the better they're going to play. And I now, now with, you know, with Flores and, and T.J. Rivera, is in the mix and you know with uh, uh, Jose who can move around if David's back you know we've got some guys that we can we can stay rested and keep them healthy I think so it, with all those parts moving around though you got Jose is your prototypical leadoff guy really probably wants to be in that spot and I'd imagine you want him in that spot as often as possible I do is Jose find a way to become pretty much an everyday player as your leadoff hitter and if no who are the guys who you would lead off uh, if you weren't playing that's that a great question for us right now I mean we haven't we haven't really uh, gone that far down the road yet but you know we're gonna we're gonna make let Jose go to this, play some center field in spring training to see how he handles it out there uh, and again I, I go back and I look at one of the things the Cubs did last year Andy they were so athletic they could move the pieces around and give guys days off and yet have have a quality backup going so I think that's going to allow us to do something like that now when it comes to leading off you know we'll have to find if Jose's not playing that day we've got to find somebody and fortunately right now Curtis Granderson we, we, we know he can do it. Mm -hmm. you know, Terry on that point and you mentioned the Cubs and, and listen with that versatility you know the lineup does change around I mean can you talk about that and how you kind of try to manipulate that lineup on a regular basis. Well, you know, Jim, you look at a lot of things we had to go through last year. You know, if somebody went, if one of our outfielders went down, we really didn't have somebody who played all three spots. So, you know, we were asking a lot of times guys to play out of position once in a while. And I think now that we, going into spring training, we're going to have some pieces that we can move around. So now if somebody goes down, hey, we've got a, we've got a, a guy who knows how to play right field or a guy who can play center field uh, and the same on the infield with certainly with Jose's versatility if, if something should happen to David he can go there if Neil Walker needs a couple days we can move him over there if we have to we against left-handed pitching we've got you know one more floors we've got to get in against left-handed pitching so I think the pieces uh, the fact that you know some of these guys in the last couple of years we've asked them to play other positions I think is going to give them more versatility one of those guys that has been discussed is Michael Conforto perhaps picking up a first baseman's mitt as well is that something that that you've spoken with Conforto about and and that you plan on pursuing uh, you know I, I brought it up to him last year Steve and, and he, he's open to it because he wants to play but you know with when Lucas got hurt we were really looking for you know a guy we think can play there now 
if Lucas is healthy, he's going to be the first baseman. But if we can get some reps for Michael Conforto, if something should happen, if Lucas, you know, has a bad leg or something else where he's going to miss some playing time, at least we know we've got a quality bat to put in that spot. And I just think it's important to, to make sure Michael has, has some other options besides just playing right field or left field. What about with Travis Darno? We've seen what he can do, but last year clearly a disappointing season. Uh, Glenn Sherlock now coming on board. You have a catching coach who did not have one last year. How much can a guy like Glenn Sherlock help Travis Darno? Well, I, I think having him be there every day, I think is going to make a big difference. I, you know, you can really start to dissect a little bit when you're on site. You know, instead of just, uh, you know, when, we had, when Bob Guerin was there, Bob could, you know, hey, look, you're not playing today. Let's do some extra work today. And I think with Glenn, now we're going to be able to do that to, to make sure Travis stays. He, you know, I think this winter, taking this winter off is going to be good for him. Uh, I know he was very frustrated at the end of the year the way he played. I know he's bound and determined. He's already been to Arizona to see Kevin Long, to see Glenn Sherlock. So uh, he certainly he's got his mind in the right spot. Talk a little bit about Travis possibly also playing a little first in spring. And that was something I remember us talking about that 12 months ago at the meetings. We're talking about Conforto at first, not Reyes in the outfield. All these are great ideas, but how realistic that you'll actually have the chance juggling all the things you juggle in, in March to get all to get a look at all these. Well, you know, we're gonna we've one of the things we're trying to do, Andy, is we, you know, we, we it kind of goes back to David Wright. Hey, look, we've got to we've got to be careful to get him ready, but yet we got to get him ready. We've got to get him more at bats. So I think we've what we've got to do is come up with some more morning games to where we can get these guys so they're not they don't have to go play first base and be embarrassed in front of 6,000 people right we can put them in a B game in the morning and I think so this spring we're going to try to get we're going to we are asking to bring some more pitching in because we've got to take Harvey and DeGrom those guys that have had surgery we got to take it slow with them so we got to get the innings for all these guys so we're going to probably ask to play some more games this spring hey Tara how, how about you, know, you talked a lot of uh, potential options at first how about Lucas what what are reasonable expectations for him coming off the, the injury well again Again, Jim, we won't, you know, all these guys that are coming off injury, we got to wait to spring training, but Lucas is already down in, in St. Lucie. He's at that fitness camp getting ready. He's, get, he's getting his core strong. He feels great. He looks terrific. Um, and and the, the issue is he's such a hard worker. You know, I think we got to pace him a little bit. And again, hey, look, we've got a long time to go. And, and, and but this guy, he gets after it. He wants to, be, you know, he wants to get back on the field as fast as he can and show everybody he can be the player that we all think he can be. And, and I think it's just a matter of making sure Lucas, again, we approach it the right way, get him some at bats, and yet don't overplay him to where, hey, look, we're gonna, you know, we fatigue him so 